California's gold is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California public television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and hopefully this is going to be a learning experience for us all. Now let me set the stage. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. We're on the campus of Occidental College in the community of Eagle Rock in the city of Los Angeles. Now Occidental College, look at this, it's absolutely spectacular. It's one of the oldest, most historic, and one of the finest liberal arts universities anywhere in the state of California. Now, Jim, introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Jim, Jim Tranquata, the Director of Communications here at Occidental. This is an old school. It was founded back in? 1887. And it's always had some of the best and some of the brightest students anywhere in the country. That's absolutely right. I say anywhere in the country, but actually you've had students over the years from all over the world and literally all over our country. That's exactly right. Half of our students come from out of state. A lot of your students have traditionally come from the state of Hawaii, and that is a relationship between Occidental and Hawaii that goes way back as well. That's right. And there's one student in particular <clears throat> who came to us from Hawaii in 1979. He graduated from a high school in Hawaii, right? That's right, from Punahou. Okay, that is why we're here. His name was? Barack Obama, but when he came to Occidental, everybody knew him as Barry Obama. Barack Obama, the president-elect of the United States, was a student here on this campus from 1979 to 1981. That's right. And that's got to make everybody here very proud. We are very proud and very excited. And there are not many colleges who can claim that distinction of having a former or a present or a future president attending their university, their college. We have joined an elite group and actually Occidental is one of only two small liberal arts colleges west of the Rockies that has produced a president. The other one of course being Whittier College where Richard Nixon went to school. So both of these schools were located in California. That's right, right here. Well now on this adventure we're going to spend the day on the campus and a beautiful campus it is. I'm embarrassed to say that I have never been on this campus but I'm not alone. You've heard that before haven't you? Hidden gem is a term that is often applied to Occidental, but I think that with the uh, election of uh, President Obama, that is going to change. Absolutely. Well, this will never change. These are historic buildings. The students, the quality is still high, and we're going in search of California's gold, which is not only the college itself, but the fact that Barack Obama attended class here for two years and the adventure begins right now we're standing here by these steps you know everywhere you go on the campus I have a feeling that we're going to kind of be retracing history and finding places that were important to Barack Obama when he was here on this campus these are the classroom buildings that he would have attended class in these buildings, Absolutely. Right? This is Johnson Hall here and Fowler here. These are two of the original buildings on campus. And uh, President Obama certainly attended classes in one of these buildings. Yeah, probably nothing much has changed on the campus since he was here. There have been a few changes, but standing right here, you wouldn't know it. All right, now where you say standing right here, we are not standing here by accident. And at walking by the steps, if you didn't have someone like Jim Jim with you to point it out. I just think these are nice steps leading up to, is that the administration that, building? Exactly so. But these steps are very historic and tie in directly to Barack Obama's days here as a student and to what he ended up, his eventual, you know, what he developed into. 
Uh, President Obama has said that he first got into politics at Occidental and started thinking about a career in public service at Occidental. These steps over the years have been the scene of a number of rallies and demonstrations because it's a symbolic site right in front of the administration building. Um, at the time uh, when President Obama was a student here, the uh, protests against the apartheid uh, of South Africa was a major issue on this campus, many other campuses. Uh, President Obama was involved in that uh, movement, and uh, we believe that this is probably one of the places where he made one of his first political speeches at a divestment rally. Really? Uh, urging the uh, college to divest itself from companies who operated in South so Africa. So there are no photographs of it. In fact, there are very few photographs of Barack Obama as a student here at Occidental, but we think that one, possibly the very first political speech he ever made in his life could have been made right here on these steps at Occidental College. That's right. We're right there. You need a plaque or something up here. <laughs> well, the the, the, we're, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, history to be marked here yeah. at Occidental. Yes, from over the years. But here, look, here it is. The students have, have uh, put some uh, chalk here. Obama. So his name is here on the steps where he got his political start, made his first speech back in 1979 right here on the campus. Boy, I have a feeling we're in for a real adventure today. If this is any indication, we're going to have a lot of fun and retrace a lot of Barack Obama history here on this campus. Now it gets interesting. We have crossed the street from the main campus to visit with a professor who's on sabbatical this session. But this fella is not just any old professor. Your name, sir, is? Roger Boucher. And your association with young student Barack Obama was what? I think I was the first person to teach him a political science course. So you taught him political science? I did. W was this a basic course? It or? was an introduction to uh, American politics. It'd be the fall of 1979. Um, it was divided into two sections. For the first five weeks, I taught American political thought. We did Jefferson, and we did the Constitution, we did Madison, Lincoln, the populace, progressives, New Deal. And the second five weeks, uh, Dick Reith, a great constitutional law professor, taught institutions, which would be, for him, Supreme Court, but also Congress and the presidency. Now, do you remember, you've had so many students over the years, do you remember him as a student? I actually do. Um, part of it is the name, which was different, and part of it was uh, the afro he was wearing, oh. or sporting, or um, whatever at the time. So Was he an activist in class? Was he always asking kind of probing questions? Uh, he was articulate and always smart, uh, intelligent. I don't know that I call him an activist, mm -hmm. but uh, actively intelligent. How about that? Do you think that he was at that time forming his political mind. Was it still a work in progress? I know it's always a work in progress, but did you get the idea that 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 something was going on in there that was important? Uh, we know that it was happening at that time. Uh, when he spoke at Wesleyan commencement last spring, when uh, Senator Kennedy had the brain tumor and couldn't speak, I heard that on the radio, and he said that in his first two years of college, which would be Occidental College, uh, he changed, and he went from a little bit less partying to a little bit more thinking and studying and taking things seriously. So we know that uh, he did well academically, but we also know he became very serious about issues of social justice, uh, divesting from companies that were doing business in um, South Africa, apartheid in South Africa, and also very concerned about violence in Central America. Mm -hmm. And that started at Occidental. And as you read his um, uh, first book, 
you can see that he learned at Occidental that he had an ability to speak and move audiences. And how proud does that make you personally feel as one of his professors and as a part of the Occidental family that all of this happened in that two-year period when he was here? Yeah, I give Occidental College a lot of credit. Somehow it was making him and probably a lot of other people think uh, and take issues seriously. Um, I got a real thrill out of marking his name on the ballot, and I, I did it several times to make sure that ink mark um, wasn't missed. So, um, yeah, it's a nice feeling. This is such a beautiful campus. Yeah, Hewell, it's one of the jewels of Los Angeles. It's only 10 minutes from downtown, and it's uh, like you're in the country. Uh, and you it's know wonderful. what you're talking about because you're a former student here. That's, that's right, Hewell. Your name I, is? My name is Ken Solzer. I'm class of 1982. And you brought us here. Let's walk right up here so we can get a good shot of it. This is Haynes Hall, which was one of the dormitories that you lived in. and had a friendship with a young Barack Obama. That's right. Uh, me and my two roommates and Barack and his two roommates, we lived across the hall from one another when he was a freshman and I was a sophomore. And uh, they were very small rooms and they were triples. And um, it was very crowded, so we spent a lot of time with one another. Now, were and you all talking politics? Were you talking about parties? Were you talking about who did what over the weekend? What were you talking about? Now, be honest. All of the above, all of the above. We certainly talked about which parties were good and where we should go. Not which political party, Not which party which, party. Which party parties, that's true, that's true. We also talked a lot of politics. What was going on right then was the uh, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Um, and all of us had to sign up for uh, selective service, which there was a hiatus between Vietnam wow. and that point. And we discussed this ad nauseum. Uh, I did as well with with Barack and with uh, the rest of the guys. Now, on the did floor. everybody agree? Was everybody of the no. same political mind? Not not at all. And that's that's one of the things that kind of relates to Barack uh, or to our president elect now uh, is that uh, one of my roommates joined the military, and one of my roommates burned his draft card. Wow! And so the you one were that all over the place. we were all over the place, and uh, Barack was fast friends with my very conservative buddy who joined the military and is a was in the military for 20 years and is a surgeon in Hawaii now. Wow. So that was the start of this person able to talk to people that are uh, different than him. Yeah, so. okay, now we're outside. Can we go in Haynes Hall? I think we can. Because this is kind of a, a trip back into time now. We're going back into your dormitory, to Barack Obama's dormitory, Haynes Hall, from 1980-81. This is 79-80. And it's right. still a dormitory it's, today. It looks very similar. Is it co-ed today? I, I believe it's co-ed today. Was it co-ed then? It, it definitely was co-ed then. Okay, we're inside the dorm. We're on the first floor of Haynes Annex. First, Ken, you're taking us to this, your old room. This is my old room, Huel, where I live with my two roommates. Come on, let's walk in here. And these fellas, we gave you about two minutes warning <laughs> that we were going to be here. Your name is? I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. Mike. Nice to meet you. Muhammad. And does this bring back memories about what the room, come on in here, Cameron, and look around, what the room looked like when you were a student here? You will, it looks surprisingly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, our room was a little messier. No. <laughs> What's in your, you're yeah. carrying on in a proud tradition. Of we course. cleaned yesterday, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, you probably never met this fella who, yeah. who was actually in your room back in 19... 1979 and 1980. You weren't even yeah. born then. Yeah. But do you know about where Barack Obama's room was? Has that word gotten out inside Haynes Hall? Yes, it has. So it's kind of a famous room, right? Yeah. Do you feel any pressure being right across oh, the hall? there's a lot of pressure now. We know he was in our room and Obama was across the hall. It's just like... <laughs> so you're going to have to clean the place up because yeah. there could be tours coming through here. You never know who's going to show up with their cameras. Nice to meet you. Now you can go back to bed because we got him out of bed. Come on, Ken. Let's now go into the room and it should have a plaque or something over it, don't you think? I understand our president is working on that uh, at this moment. The our president Barack of our college. Obama suite. 
I'm just a trustee. You know, our president's going to have to tell us what he's going to do. We'll do something, I think. All right, here we go. This is the actual. Now, boy, this room is cleaned up. Now, it didn't look like this. No, it was about as messy as the room we were just in. Yeah. And um, it was very crowded. There's three uh, grown men in each of these rooms. So we spent a lot of time in the hallway we just walked through, sitting against the wall, talking, drinking beers. Were you about allowed to drink beers in the dorm? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question, you if we were allowed careful. or not. We <laughs> did uh, we freely admit that. Uh -huh. uh, times were a little different then. I, I, my understanding is today uh, it is not allowed, and alcohol yeah. is not allowed in the dorms. But times, times were different then, and um, so we had a lot of fun. We talked about our classes, about our political science classes. I was in political science classes with him. About and your social life. We talked about, our so, talked about our social life. Uh, he was, I didn't remember that much about his social life. Uh, I didn't know any of the girls he was dating or the women he was dating at the time. Um, I'm sure I told him about my girlfriends uh -huh. uh, and when we talked. And um, talked about school, basketball. The, uh, the Lakers had this new rookie named Magic Johnson. So I know we and talked Barack about that. And Barack knew his basketball. And Barack didn't know his basketball, and he was a decent player. Now, let me ask you this, and this is a serious question. Was there any indication, and I know now everybody looking back sees things they didn't see then, but was there anything about him that made him stand out in your mind other than just being a good guy? Other than being a good guy, he was incredibly, incredibly smart. Um, I remember one day uh, we came back from Dr. Boucher's class, and I had gotten an A on the test, and I thought I was a pretty smart guy. I also went to Harvard Law School, got honors. I thought I was a pretty smart guy, so I was telling Barack, hey, I got an A. What would you get? What would you get? He wouldn't tell me. So right in the hallway over there, I grabbed the test out of his hand, and sure enough, he'd got an A+. Plus. So at that point, I said, this person is special. I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he'll be president of something. I just don't know what. And when he hit the news, all these memories came rushing back. A absolutely. The, even my daughter uh, downloaded all the songs we used to listen to here in uh, Haynes, and I've got them on my iPod uh, uh, from the Flying Lizards and the Specials and Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones and um, the B-52's first album and uh, all that stuff. So the memories really do come back for, for all of us at Oxy that, that knew him and were friendly with him. How poignant is it to be in these rooms again? It's, it's very poignant and it's, it still hasn't really hit me yet. I, I, I thought I was ready for it when it said Barack Obama elected president and I was at a, my congressman uh, here, I was at his party and I just started to shake. Yeah. I was so thrilled and so happy for my friend. Well, uh, you know what? There are not many people who can say they knew a president of the United States back in the good old college days. Yeah, before, before, um, before he, I think before he figured out exactly where he wanted to go, he learned a lot of it here. Before he was Barack, because he was still Barry then. He, that, that was right in the period where he changed his name. That's right. I always knew him as Barry. Well, who knows? Someday you may be reminiscing in the White House. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I wish him well, and if, if he wants me to do anything at all, I'm happy to do it. Because we're going to send this to the White House, so he might be watching this. Okay, make us proud, Mr. President. Make us proud. Now, this is interesting. Before we leave Haynes Hall, you have brought what for us to look at? This is the yearbook, the La Encina from uh, Senator Obama's freshman year here at Occidental. 1979. Here's the Occidental yearbook. Here's the picture. Come here, fellas. Look at this of Haynes Hall. This is the whole floor right there. Yeah, it's the whole dorm. <laughs> the whole dorm. And where is Obama in this picture? I am pretty sure, although there's a silhouette, he is very at the very back where you can see his silhouette and the and the small afro that he wore mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Yeah. And this was just a kind of an informal looking group shot. This was about as formal as we got in 1979, Do you still take pictures wow. like this for the yearbook? Uh, uh, no. Not, not <laughs> this year, no. <laughs> See, this is very old-fashioned. They'd never do it anything does, like this today. It, it does make me feel a little old. You have pulled something out of the archives, and this was news to you. This was news to me. This is very interesting. This is, looks like an old literary publication. It's the uh, Feast. Uh, it's, it, it is uh, the now defunct, there are now other literary publications on campus. This is the one of the period. And right here on page 11, 
by Barack Obama is a, would you call this a poem? Yeah, these are two of his poems. On pages 11 and 12, one is called Pop and one is called Underground. Exactly. These, uh, actually, these are, um, these, can't, these surfaced earlier this year. President-elect Obama can actually claim to be a published poet, not only because uh, his poems appeared in Feast, but they've also appeared in The New Yorker. Well, you had to start somewhere before you went to The New Yorker, so he started in The Feast right here on the Occidental College campus. He did, and we now have a poet president from Occidental. I've hooked up with Jim Jacobs, who's the head of the Alumni Association here yes. at Occidental. Jim, uh, this is a unique opportunity for the Alumni Association to really get some stuff going. This is really putting Occidental well, and its alumni on the map. It is. We're absolutely uh, very excited about this special event. In fact, we are thinking that there are probably only 25 alumni associations in the history of the United States that can claim an alumnus as president of the United States. So we're very excited about that. We've also heard from a number of alumni already who actually have plans to be in Washington, D.C. Ah, they're going for the to the inauguration. The have they started contacting you about having Occidental alumni tours of the White House, uh, of the living quarters? I, of the Lincoln Bedroom, I the think, Lincoln bedroom. Is, I mean, a, is an excellent idea. I think that would probably be the, the um, alumni event to end all alumni events that I see a uh, tour of the White House hosted by Barack and Michelle Obama. I think we might go to a wait list on that one. So here you go, fall 2004. This is the Alumni Magazine, yes. and this was in honor of his address to the 2004 Democratic, Democratic, Convention. Democratic Convention. Yes, yes so it was. So you're kind of ahead of the curve. Now here's the tough question. How involved has he been in the Alumni Association all these years? Well, I have not to say really I have to say that he has not attended any alumni events, but however, he speaks very highly of Occidental, especially now as being one of the great colleges that he's gone to, and that he attributes his time at Oxy as having really started him on this path of public service. Is he on, wait a minute, is he on your mailing list for mm -hmm. annual giving? Is yes. he a member of your go gold yes. circle we, benefactor? Well, not gold circle, but we don't have a gold circle. <laughs> However, he is on our mailing list, and I can say that I hope to be the staff member on January 20th that changes his address from Chicago to the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Gives me goosebumps. I'm a little uncomfortable seated in this chair, but this is probably the most historic chair anywhere, not only on the Occidental campus, but probably in California. I am here in the history department with Dr. Wellington Chan, who is the keeper of the chair. Tell us what this chair is all about, and are you sure it's okay for me to be seated in it? Well, uh, we have students uh, uh, sitting in it uh, many, many a time, so you are perfectly welcome and, right, and perfectly it's so right. Historic. Now, what's the deal on it's, the chair? Um, it's, it's a chair that the college uh, built specially for President Taft when he came at invitation of our college president, President Baer, to visit us during the time of his office. I think it was in the, in the, in well, the autumn. Well, it says it right here, October the, the 16th, 1911. That's correct. So um, this is a presidential chair that he special. sat in on the campus of Occidental College, and you are the keeper well, the of the chair. I'm, I am uh, simply because I'm the occupant of this office, <laughs> and the uh, history department, as far as I can tell, has been the keeper the, the department chair. has been the keeper of the chair since at least the 1960s. The presidential chair. And now this brings in the rest of the story. Come in here, Jim. We've already met Jim, who's the head of the Alumni Association. Jim, you have your eyes. I don't know whether you've heard this or not, Dr. Chan. Jim has his eyes on your chair. And what do you want to do here, Jim? We have big plans to invite President-elect Obama back to Occidental to speak. And he has assured two trustees that he met this fall at a fundraiser that if elected during his presidency, he will do that. And when he comes on campus to speak, how does the chair figure into well, it? Well, I think uh, he will be sitting in this chair while he is introduced and then following his appearance on campus, 
my plan at least is to have a nice plaque made for the that other arm. says on this chair sat President Barack Obama when he spoke at Occidental College and so you'll have a chair on your campus that two presidents have been seated in yes and a hundred years from now someone else will be admiring this chair Wow what do you think I think historic I think uh, this is, um, and I think history department is indeed a place where this kind of things could be. Oh no, when that happens, <laughs> this chair is out of the history department. It's coming to the alumni center. It's coming like. to the alumni center, <laughs> you know, for that, that annual giving kind of a thing. But here it is, let's stand out of the way and look at the chair. Here is the presidential chair. It's already got the plaque over here for William Howard Taft and hopefully in a few more years, it'll have another one for President Barack Obama right here on the Occidental campus. Okay, we continue our Occidental College adventure standing by the fountain. Is it just known as the fountain, Jim? If, if you say the fountain on the Occidental campus, everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. It's one of the landmarks. Absolutely. Known as also as the... Star Trek fountain because it had a very brief appearance in Star Trek III. <laughs> Okay, we're not here to talk about the fountain. We're here to talk about this picture right here because we've already talked about the fact that Barack Obama didn't have a lot of pictures in the yearbook. In fact, just that one the group picture of all the residents of Haynes Hall. But here's the other picture that you have of him, and I recognize this. What is this picture? That is the photo, the headshot that he sent in with his freshman application, but you also might have seen it on the cover of Newsweek earlier That's this year. That's where I've seen it. So the picture that was on the cover of Newsweek magazine was literally the picture that he used on his application form for Occidental College. Because uh, we then and now uh, first-year applicants are required to send in a photo of themselves and this is the photo that he sent in with his application. Well this was a high school photograph. Exactly. This it? was taken I assume his senior year at Punahou in Honolulu. Wow so this this is priceless now because it was attached to his application form. It, this photo and the application form are kept under lock and key in the registrar's office. Yeah, you let us see the photo, but you told us the application form, for obvious reasons, is private and confidential and can't be shared with the media. And as soon as I give it back to Jim, it goes back under lock and key. Everywhere we have been today on this beautiful campus and every person we have met, young and old, is very proud of the fact that this man, Barack Obama, spent two years here. I think you're right. I think you're right. There, there is a pride, uh, which is understandable, uh, and that he is so much like what Occidental now wants to be. Yeah. Uh, his, his parentage, his family background, uh, what he's talking about, his idealism, and actually the students we have on campus, the so-called millennial generation, uh, express the ideals that yeah. Obama himself is expressing. Yeah. Well, evidently he had a wonderful two years here. Yes, yes. Well, uh, I'm sure it was a challenging two years, I mean, by his own account that he came here as a person not sure who he was, uh, somewhat alienated, and that the change occurred here. President-elect Barack Obama's college days in Southern California. What an inspirational story. And if you'd like to keep this for your permanent collection, or more importantly, donate a copy to your local school or library, it's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.